My name is uh, Floyd Caleb. Um, born 1957, although with the, don't let the white hair fool you, I'm much younger than that. <laughs> Today is uh, April 6th, 2013, which is three years to the day I got out of prison. And after going to the PO's office, my, my PO dropped me off at the Turner House, which I didn't know anything about it. It's a transitional living facility, right? I'm, that's what I was told. And I'm thinking, facility, you know. Here I, he pulls up to a house. And I'm going, wow, this is cool. He walks me inside and says, okay, this is Floyd. Uh, I can't even remember who was in the living room at the time. I know Mitch was there and a couple other guys. And he said, welcome home. And I'm going, welcome home? And people says, okay, here you are. And he turns around and leaves. And I'm looking around, I'm thinking, wow, I'm really out of prison. I mean, I'm really out of prison. There's no guns, no guards, no, no anybody, you know. I was so happy. Guys instantly start making phone calls. Right? I'm calling Tommy, let him know you're here. Da, 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 da. I said, okay, so he, Take me into the room and say, this is where you're going to stay. And I'm like, oh, cool, cool, cool. And within an hour, I think it was, maybe an hour and a half, this big man walks in the door. He says, you're Floyd, huh? Yeah. Hi, I'm Tommy. <laughs> this is my house. I says, hi. <laughs> and he gives me this big hug. And I'm like, Welcome home. And it was so cool to finally meet one of the individuals that helped me get out of prison. Because if it wasn't for this, if it wasn't for the Turner House, I'd still be inside the joint. I know to this day. And it was such a feeling. It's almost indescribable. It's like happy, joy. There's this old movie clip, happy, joy, joy, or joy, happy, whatever it is. But I, I, it was almost inexplicable, the, the, the joy of being out. I'll never forget, I told the guy, well, you got to sign in and sign out, going into the house. I said, okay. So I signed out, and what do I do? First thing I do, I walk around the block and just look at the neighborhood. <laughs> I mean, that, it was such a luxury to do something like that, just walk around and look at normal people and normal things. And of course, the next day was rather exciting. Tommy shows up with his partners in the transitional place, uh, Jennifer and, hold on, it'll come to me eventually, uh, he even married me. Rick. Rick! Duh! Rick and Jennifer show up along with Tommy, where do you want to go? Oh, have lunch or dinner or something. And I always, you know, watch the commercial on TV about hometown buffet. Oh, and it was right down the street. Yeah, okay, we'll go there. And there I am. I'm inside this place. Relatively large. You know, lots, not so many people, which is a good thing. And I said, well, uh, go get whatever you want. So I got this plate in my hand. And I stopped, and I'm looking. And I'm looking. And I'm looking. And it's like, the light's on, but nobody's home. Because I, I had choices. My food wasn't already prepared for me to walk by with a tray and have them dump it on there. This is, I get to choose what I want, but I couldn't make a decision. I'm standing there going, that looks good, that looks good, that looks good. Everything looked good. So, of course, when it all looks good, what do you choose first? I don't know how long I was standing there, but I come to find out Tommy was highly amused. Um, he actually told me, he says, I've never had so much fun watching an individual stand there completely lost in thought. <laughs> and I was. I mean, you know, and then I started sampling things. I mean, it was, I love good food. Don't get me wrong, my mom was a great cook, but I love good food. And of course, I ate. And then, as time goes by, you know, 
like you get to know some of the guys in the house and they start showing me around. I was, and Tommy, I guess, is very proud to say this, I was his first lifer. I was the guy breaking, not wind, breaking ground. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, breaking ground and, you know, and I knew I had, I, I never wanted to go back to the joint. I knew this, but I knew I had to do it right, you know. And I listened to the guys, and they, they showed me, said, I've never been to Sacramento before, you know. I've been driving through it. I usually went to the Bay Area. So, Sacramento's a complete mystery to me beyond things I see on TV. And, you know, when exploring and stuff like that, and I, you don't understand, after spending 30 years inside, what it's like to walk around with free folk and not be paranoid. Because you're so used to having guns and people watch you, you know, other guys watching what you're doing. And, and here you are, and people out there in the streets, they don't know who you are, they don't know where you've been, they kind of ignore you, which is fun in one thing, but spooky on the other. I mean, my first month out of the joint was such a joy and a, a nervous wreck thing. You know, because you, you don't know what to expect. And, you know, you, you expect certain things to happen you know, because, you know, it's kind of ingrained into you over three decades. But when they don't happen, it's like, okay, now what? You get confused. And I did, but I had somebody to talk to. And that's one of the things I've learned inside is talking. If you talk things through, even when you get angry or something, you know, what the heck did I get angry for? And when you talk, you get these things out and they don't poison you inside. It's all good in the neighborhood. And it's an amazing thing. And if it wasn't for Tommy and Reentry Inc., I don't know, I, I'd probably still be a lost soul. As it is, I'm having the time of my life, man. It, it is so cool. I mean, it, it could have been hard. It, 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 I could have made it hard on myself, you know? It's hard finding a job. I mean, you know, you put on a resume, <laughs> the first resume I filled out. Have you ever been convicted of a crime, a, a felony, a, past five years? No. Have you been convicted of a felony in the past, in the last 10 years? No. Have you ever been convicted of a felony? Well, yes. And they don't want a PC number. They want it wrote out what you did. So. Second degree murder. And of course you get the look on their face and you don't call us, we'll call you. <laughs> that can hurt inside. And it can drive you to feel sorry for yourself. You know, they're being stuck up. You know what? No. If you think back to all that crap you went through inside, this is nothing. This is a cakewalk. Now, of course, I was confused as to exactly what I was going to do until Tommy suggested, why don't you go back to school? Now, the thought didn't even occur to me. But you know what? For the past three years, I haven't been to college. Me, a college dude. <laughs> Amazing. I didn't ever thunk it. I mean, I took some college courses in a the joint. There's some guys who got master's degrees, but it just wasn't my thing, right? Man, school's fun. And that's what I'm saying is, I'm having the time of my life, not just going to school, but after all that dreariness and regimented, force-feeding, timed things I went through for 30 years, you know what? I can look back at that and go, this is not bad at all. This is, this is everything's great. I mean, it's so cool. I mean, I could have made it bad for myself, but you know what? Uh-uh. After what I've been through, uh-uh. Granted, I deserve to be in prison for what I did. 
Don't get me wrong, okay? I did what I did. I took responsibility for it. And I still think Billy almost every day. Yeah, I'm talking legally, sit down and